I've had an interest in painting and poetry for as long as I can remember. Um, just sort of crept up on me as I, as I got, got older and decided it was a profession that I wanted to take up. Before this, I was started off building, which most of my family were doing. And so I worked with all my uncles and my father building and always had this yearning to sort of be a painter or a poet. I think I was probably the only builder on the site reading Thomas Hardy and Roger McGough at lunchtime. And we used to get ridiculed for that, which was quite amusing. But as time went on, I carried on with the building, started playing in bands and groups after teaching myself to play guitar. But still had this yearning to go back to become a painter or a poet, which was obviously this lifelong dream. inspirations as a painter, I would say stem mostly from the modern British painters. Christopher Wood probably being one of my all-time favourites. Um, but the likes of Winifred Nicholson, Mary Potter, Mary Newcomb, those types of paintings. William Scott, I love the sort of abstract textures, as I do of Ben Nicholson's work. I just love the paint textures that they use, which I've sort of, I suppose, taken pieces from all of those sort of modern British painters and developed them into my own work. And Lowry, I, you know, people often, I suppose, look at my work and talk about Lowry. Although I was ad admired Lowry as a painter, and probably the thing I picked up from Lowry most was his use of white paint, which I absolutely adore. Just the different colours and textures and tones you can get with just white paint. My, my painting really developed and changed um, when I was diagnosed with cancer. You know, I mean, I. I really don't, it's something I don't like to harp on about because there's lots of people that suffer from the disease and I was just fortunate to be one of those who did survive but it was a big, big turning point in my style of painting. It actually gave me so much freedom that the fact that I didn't know whether I was going to survive the illness but I just felt free to paint whatever I wanted to paint because it didn't I didn't really know whether I'd even end up getting it as far as an exhibition because I really didn't know whether I'd be around to see it hanging anywhere. So it was almost an overnight change when I started to recover just to sort of get up and paint exactly what I wanted to paint and however I wanted to paint. And it really didn't matter if anybody liked it or not. And fortunately for me, people saw what I felt in my paintings and it really has taken off for me. But it really was an overnight change. I was a t sort of tonal impressionist when I started my cancer journey. And I would say just myself when I came out of it, just painting exactly my feelings, my emotions, my brush strokes and nobody else's and I just love that freedom that it's given me.
I'm standing here with my master. There's a thought that's in my head. Why do dogs eat sausages and goldfish eat white bread? The poetry, I, I mean, without sounding sort of morbid or maudly, really started when I, I really just started writing verses on quite personal paintings that I'd done for my family when I was actually ill with the cancer. And it was almost like I, I was just writing little poems in case I didn't survive and painting them little personal canvases just to leave as little mementos, I suppose. But then, having not popped me clogs, I just carried on writing the poems with every canvas and I don't really separate between the two. I, I think it's all part of a whole, really. And people often ask me what comes first, the painting or the poem, but sometimes the poem can become the painting or the painting can become the, po the poem, but at the end of the day they all become one really. I, uh, and I, I think they do sit together well. Have you heard about Doris at number six? She's thrown out Dave and moved in Dick. If she wants to wash his pants and shirt, she can throw out Dick and have my Bert said Ivy. My influence would have probably definitely been Roger McGough, the, who was one of the Liverpool poets, which I absolutely love his poetry. And probably the humorous side comes from Spike Milligan's poetry. I, I think for someone with his sense of humour, he could say so much in four lines, and I think that's where my short verses came from, really, you know, from the likes of Spike Milligan. And I could probably drop Pam Ayres in, which you know, probably most people would think a bit strange, but I think her sense of humour is second to none in the poetry stakes. Big Bertha was up to her tricks again. The crowd was so amazed. Some men cheered. The animal rights lady jeered. Some men's eyes were glazed. Bertha stood before them with barely nothing on. She blew them a kiss, thrust her hips and pulled a rabbit out of her thong. I love the coast. Um, a lot of my father's relatives were fishermen um, up in Suffolk, sailing out of Lowestoft. So that's always been sort of dear to my heart. Um, and I just love the contemplation of being by the sea. Almost that loneliness, which probably is much like myself when I'm in the shed. And it's that contemplation, just being alone just thinking of the world as it is and painting what I feel rather than what I see a lot of the time. I don't really travel to paint site-specific paintings, but I'll go to places such as Alborough and my love the South Downs just to people watch and get the whole feeling of the place and then come back and paint. It's very rare that I'd sort of paint on site nowadays. I used to when I was out more of a tonal impressionist type painter. But I like really just to soak up the, the emotion rather than trying to paint anything site specific. I like nice things, I like nice emotions, you know, whether they be happy emotions, sad emotions, contemplative emotions, you know, I. I I just like that emotional journey through a painting. And I hope that the viewer just picks up on those emotions. And I always sort of think if the painting isn't coming from a heart, then it's not worth painting. So I hope that the viewer sort of picks up on what I'm thinking or feeling. And I, I do get comments from sort of people at the exhibitions that my father in the garden that I've painted could be their father or their grandfather. Or the man on the beach with the dog, you know, it could be your father, my father, you know, your uncle, your grandfather, and hopefully they evoke the fond memories that I have of, you 
you know, sort of people in my family. And I, I think that's what I paint. I, I do definitely live in the past as far as my painting goes. Um, because I liked everything that was nice about the world that I, I sort of grew up in. And so I probably do, am guilty of harping back to the past a lot of the time. But that's quite okay with me. The old man and the dog, a lot of people ask me about this, who is he? And I mean, it, it is actually me. I actually paint myself in my old age in case I never get there. So, and I don't mean that in a sad, melancholy sort of way, you know. I just paint myself on my travels in my old age. I just think it's a nice thing to be able to do. I can, I mean, I can basically be who I want, where I want, whenever I want in my paintings. And, and that's what I do. So I might paint myself and my wife, Lynn, we could come back from Albra and we'll appear as an old couple sitting at the beach having fish and chips. Because I just find that that image sort of relates to the viewer more than trying to make it too personal. Because once again, it could be anybody. It could be your mother and father, your nan and grandfather, yourself when you get older. I can, I mean, painting just gives me the freedom to be who I want, whenever. Which is in a, which is in a bad place to be. I'm often asked about my faith, um, which I obviously make no secret about. Um, it's a big part of my life and always has been. And before the cancer, it was a big part and probably even more so afterwards. Um, and it's a big, big part of my painting. You know, my talent is definitely God-given. And I never think of it as my own success. I think that would be a big mistake, you know, with the talents being given to me and the whole success of being an artist. I think one thing my faith has taught me is it's everybody's success. You know, I tend to only paint when it feels right, you know, and that, you know, is when I'm in the right frame of mind, you know, the right feeling, the right emotion, and that will come through my sort of Bible study, my sort of prayer meetings. I go to a little church not far from here, and, you know, on sometimes a daily basis just to sit and have that quiet time with God. church I actually go to during the day is a little church not far from me and it contains 12 stained glass windows which were uh, designed by Mark Chagall. When I'm sitting there in the morning at sort of half eight, nine, nine o'clock before I come to the shed to paint some days, you couldn't really get much more inspiration than sitting in front of a window designed by a Mark Chagall and watching the sunlight bounce around the church on the walls changing you know with every minute I mean I just find it so inspiring to just have that quiet time there and as a painter if you couldn't get inspired by that to come home and paint I think I'd probably throw my brushes away tomorrow. I think my work has probably become popular, well I hope, um, just because of the sheer honesty. 
I mean, every painting I paint, it really, I like to think it's an honest painting. It comes from the heart. It, it, it's just an honest interpretation of my emotions and what I'm feeling. And I think it becomes popular because we all have those same emotions and people see their, see themselves in my paintings, hopefully, because they're not selfish paintings. I, I'm painting them for everybody. I want everybody to have these nice feelings and these nice emotions. You know, it's, I'm painting them for people to feel as good and as happy as I do about life. Personally, I just want to be, I want to be remembered or known as a good painter. Um, you know, my whole passion, my whole life is paint. And just to become the best painter I can be. And, you know, I move from one painting to the next. So the minute I've finished one painting, I want to produce a better painting next time around. And that's a drive I would never want to actually lose. I, I don't want to just sit and paint for the sake of painting. There's got to be something worth saying.